here we are in yet another game, and this is actually really old. I think from memory this is from like 2004 or something, but still it's a pretty amusing game, and it's kind of... It's kind of one of Doubt's signature style of games. So actually, before we go any further, let's just have a look. We're on Regicide Fortress, so that's kind of cool, something a little bit different. Uh, like I said, the game's from like 2004, so it's definitely quite an old one. Uh, we actually have a Doubt in the red over here, and his opponents are going to be, I think, uh, Venom. And he's playing as the Mayans in the grey, and Doubt's playing as the Huns in the red. So, kind of a bit of a different thing, probably two of the more popular Regicide Fortress civilizations, which is just a general. And of course, the Huns starting off with some useless houses, as we know. So, Doubt definitely plays quite a smart game here, definitely knows exactly what he's doing. And we're going to watch, and we're going to kind of just talk about things that are happening and whatnot. We'll try and do, it'll probably be more of a commentary kind of thing, but it's something I really like, so we'll kind of look at a few things as well and see why they work. So, at the moment, just building up that economy, as you can expect to see from it. These walls, of course, are really, and towers, it really means it's kind of hard to get into any kind of combat before Castle Age. Kind of like Arena, except there's these watchtowers up already, so they're going to do a lot more damage. So, naturally, most of the time, you will see the fast castle. Every now and then, if they're forced to delete a piece of their wall, or they're playing as Goth, something along that line and they delete a piece of the wall. You can see a few feudal kind of pushes, but they're never really that big unless they go for some kind of an all-in kind of push, and even then they can generally just get out-boomed. So that's just something that works there. In comes the boar through the gate there. Uh, let's actually just check the resource locations. One gold inside the base, one stone inside the base, berries inside the base. No wood though, so he did actually, he will, well he's got a little bit of wood there, but he's going to be forced to delete a bit of this wall at some point so he can get more villages in there, more lumber camps, things like that, and he's probably eventually going to have to move out to this one over here. Venom up on this side over here. He's got his gold inside his base, he's got his stone inside his base, he's got his berries in, not bad. He's got a stone towards the back there, which is pretty much perfect. His trees over here are quite nice, honestly. He's got another gold here towards the front, and he's got more trees over here and here as well. So, both players have probably a decent location. Out of the two, I'd say Venom's probably got the best one, uh, just because he's got this back stone. As a mine player, you definitely want that. And the fact that he's got this wood in here and he won't be forced to delete any of these pieces here. Doubt going up to the Feudal Age. Trust Kill, who is, I believe, is the spectator here. But Venom just going to be a little bit quicker. And there we go, Doubt up at 7 minutes 40 seconds, immediately dropping the blacksmith and the market. And of course, trying to produce two villages during that time. Because that's the magical number that it generally takes for a market to get up. So then he can advance. There we go. Brilliant. Over here on this side though, Venom, he did get up a little bit earlier. So he is going to be able to start reaching that castle age a little bit earlier. Which means he's going to be able to do a little bit more damage, which is kind of nice. And saying that, I think he's still out scouting with his king. Yeah, there he is. Another thing that you always get on Regicide Fortress is the king scouting. Got to be really careful about that though, because if you get too close to your opponent's base, or you stop looking, something like that, they can be sniped by castles and towers and things. Something that you really don't want to happen. Anyway, now's where we really see the difference start to take place uh, between the two styles here. So far, we've seen pretty much the same thing. Both players just go for a reasonably fast castle age. Over here, we see five plumed archers. Well, a lot of plumed archers immediately built. Behind that, a town centre. Because, well, plumed archers are quite heavy on the wood. So, well, they're not really heavy. They're not an expensive unit. But still, they cost wood to make. So, we can't exactly get two town centres up straight away. Even though he's just managed to get a second one up now. Doubt going for the two town centres as well. I think the next one's going to come up over here nicely. There we go. And... From him, we see absolutely no military production at all. So he's going to be completely relying on his boom for this one here, uh, that he can beat his opponent just on that alone. And that's kind of a big thing to say in a match. So I've got three plumed archers moving out across the map now, going to be able to start getting some harassment there. And here they come, the Eagle Warrior as well, of course, going to be able to help out. Scout cover over here, going to be killed off eventually, really. And here we go, so the harassment starts, and of course, garrisoning that town centre, definitely a good placement there. So he's not really losing any villagers over here. So he's definitely doing quite well, he knows what he's doing here, but of course it's doubt, of course he knows what he's doing. Over on this side over here, we've still got the two town centres 
up extra. So he's standing on the standard three. Whereas Doubt still staying on the three as well. But uh, already gathering stone and gold, which is nice. Doesn't have an emphasis on the gold though, which is kind of interesting. All the stone. Actually, saying that he just put a lot more onto stone. But he's not exactly collecting a lot of gold right now. Whereas opponent is definitely collecting quite a bit. So that's an interesting one there, and if we actually check over here, are we still getting plumed archer production? Saying that, of course, there is a little bit of harassment coming in from across all the kind of area that he's in. But of course, he's just dealing with it quite well, as you can expect out to. So plumed archer production here has stopped because, well, Venom's kind of realized right now that he's not exactly getting a lot of harassment in. So there's not really a lot of point of keeping it going. Another town center up for doubt right now. So putting him on a total of four. His opponent still sitting on three. Yep, just thought I'd check to make sure. Bloomed archers though, look like they're going to come in through here and get some harass. Let's actually see, does he manage to actually get any? Nope, no villagers there. All garrisoning into that town center. And it looks like just out of range there, of course. Uh, saying that though, six to five range. That's an interesting one. But anyway, continuing to push that one out there, and Dutch is considering to be just happy on his little economy, keep going, he's actually starting to pull ahead, he's got about 70 points, and of course that's going to come down to the fact he's got that extra town center up, which is really nice to have, it always gives you that nice eco boost, but it does of course mean sacrificing quite a bit of stone and wood, and when I say sacrificing, it's more that you're collecting stone instead of like food or wood to go towards something, and of course that wood could have gone towards a monastery, university, something like that, could have tried to get up a bit faster, whatever he's deciding to do. So if we go back to Doubt, 71 population for Venom, currently on 70, so it's still pretty close, but those military units are really the thing that's starting to make the difference. Currently 479 stone for him, finally walling off this section over here to stop his opponent from really pushing in. Uh, but the economy bonus is still definitely in Doubt's favour right now. There's still only like 40 points in it, but he, that town centre there, it's going to be giving so much extra help out because he's going to be creating extra villages there, doing his extra research, researches like he is now doing hand cut. And of course, you've got to keep them all producing, but still. Uh, generally, a pretty good option. So currently only 20 minutes into the game as well, and he's on 76 population, and pretty much, well, all of that's consisted of villages except this one scout. Overcome the plumed archers. Looks like they're going to be trying to get some harassment in here. Monk realizes, decides to move back, tries to get a convert. But like we know, converting archers can be quite hard. But there we go, getting one killed off, which is nice. I think he deleted the wrong one there. And garrisoning the town centers, and it looks like that plumed archer there. Is he going to get killed off? Yeah, eventually. There we go. So all those plumed archers, they're getting killed off as well. So the advantage, definitely in the favor of doubt right now, by 500 points. Saying that though, if we check Venom, he's already going up to the Imperial Age on 79 population, which is quite interesting. He's actually advancing at the 22 minute mark, which means he's going to be able to do quite a bit with this. Definitely a fast Imperial from that. We see the barracks coming up from him, so definitely going to see that Elite Eagle Warrior posse that we're pretty much used to seeing out of just my and Aztec players when they go for kind of a fast Imperial type of play. Another Town Center coming up for Doubt over here, so that currently puts him on how many are up to? We're up to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 Town Centers for him. Castle coming up on the front here to help defend this Ford Town Center, which is definitely a smart idea. And here come the Eagle Warriors from Venom right now. Going to be able to start doing quite a bit of damage with these guys, because as we do know, once they get those armor upgrades, they do end up with 8 armor. Especially once you get the Mine Elite tech on them as well, end up with 100 hit points. Definitely a unit that can raid quite a bit, honestly. So, right now, it's really in Doubt's court to see what he wants to do. So there's the Imperial Age from Venom there. 25 minutes. Definitely a good call. Doubt, uh, halfway towards Imperial, which isn't bad. But of course, he's still going to have to stop his opponent from just raiding his town with Eagle Warriors. His chosen weapon for this game is going to be the Tarkin. Something we never see get used. I think there's been a few games from Tim where we've seen them be used. But apart from that... Not a lot. Eagle Warriors are actually moving out across the map already. Already got their 4 plus 4 armor. Stable is up, so we can get that Bloodlines upgrade, which is so important that we can see you're just about to get now, which is great. And of course, those attack and armor upgrades, which are really important. Any unit with pretty much 6 plus pierce armor is generally really dangerous towards everything. This monk here going to get killed off, and in come the Eagle Warriors for the raiding. Uh, generally, just probably one of the most annoying units in the game. Definitely up there. Uh, with paladins on this kind of area. Uh, in come these guys just streaming across the map like we usually see. 
And of course, naturally going to lose a lot of villagers to them, that's just because it's how it works. So in come the Tarkins now, on their 110 hit points. About to hit the Imperial Age now for a doubt. Still though, he does have 600 point lead right now, so he has a pretty damn good economy, like you can imagine. That's a 27 minute Imperial with 143 population. That's pretty decent, from any standard, really. So here we go, taking out all these Eagle Warriors, the elite kind, uh, eventually, which is kind of nice. And if we can see here, still upgrading all these Tarkins. He's up to four Pierce armor on them, and I just heard an upgrade, so... Forging about to finish up, and no doubt after that we are going to see our final armor upgrade. I believe he has the resources there. Has he already got it? Nope. Still, Eagle Warriors have actually managed to get into the main area here, which could be kind of hard to deal with, but he's set up his economy quite defensively, like you can see, it's all generally around the town center or tower kind of area, or he's walled it off kind of. So he's done quite a good job actually defending that. So, the Tarkin against the Mine player is an interesting unit to use. Eagle Warriors they're probably not so good against, but still, when they're upgraded to Elite, they have a lot of hit points, and they have a lot of attack, a lot of pierce armor, and they have a bonus damage versus buildings. So, in this, essentially they're one of the perfect raiding units, so it's probably the Hun's best counter to the Eagle Warrior, so he can raid his opponent while he raids him, and the Tarkin is definitely a stronger unit than the Elite Eagle Warrior. So that's always an interesting one there, the Elite Tarkin now, so 170 hit points on it, 11 attack, 1 plus 2 armor. So once he starts getting all the upgrades on them, they start getting really dangerous, like you can imagine. Siege Workshop coming up on the front over here, another one attempted to come up over here. And it's generally just a good play from Doubt, actually, from what we're going to see here. He's going to be pretty defensive from now, just because of the fact that Elite Eagle Warriors are streaming into his base, and if you let them go to town on your base, you just kind of lose. That's just a known fact of this game. But another thing about them is they are quite expensive on the gold. They're 50 gold each, only 20 food, which is definitely quite a bargain there. But it does run your opponent out of gold quite quickly, and they do need a lot of gold collectors for them. Uh, same goes for the Tarkin, though. Definitely a more expensive unit. Uh, not by heaps, but still a little bit more expensive. These villagers over here finally being sent back to work. But the Tarkin numbers are just slowly starting to grow. He's got this extra castle up here as well, so he's producing three at a time now which just naturally really helps the more units you have, the better. 800 point lead right now, and he's really starting to hammer at home here. Uh, is he going for any more blacksmith upgrades? Yes, there we go, there's the final armor upgrade that I was waiting for, so I can get that just extremely high pierce armor of 7, which is just absolutely great for them, and he's kind of starting to push his opponent back now. And if you've ever really seen Tarkins be used in mass, you can't be pushed back. Castles, they destroy. Any mil well, any building, they just absolutely destroy. If they get into your base, 170 hit points, 3 plus 4 pierce armor, you're in trouble. That's kind of just the way it goes. So, Doubt's playing this game has been quite intelligent, honestly. He knows his opponent's going to be going for that relatively fast castle, so he matches it. Fair enough, it's Registered Fortress. It's what you do. Uh, then he knows as well, his opponent's most likely going to be going for those plumed archers, because, well, he's a Mayan player and he started off with a castle, so why the hell not? And then off that, he's realized, well, he can go for kind of a massive boom if he can keep his himself well defended, which he did. So he was able to get up this absolutely massive economy while his opponent wasn't. There's currently 1,200 points in it, we're only at 31 minutes into the game. That kind of puts you at a kind of place where you're like, you can really tell by that how much difference the economy is making. Also, the fact is being slaughtering heaps of Eagle Warriors generally helps quite well. And they do have the 100 hit points now, but they're still lacking that last attack upgrade. Uh, the Tarkin's still lacking the next two attack upgrades, which is kind of interesting from doubt. Iron Casting actually on the way right now. And it's an interesting one altogether, actually, on how he just goes about playing this. He's thought it through. He's definitely been smart with it. So if we just speed things along here, we're going to see exactly why these units are so powerful. The only reason I really think they're underused is because they they have to be created at the castle, so they, you can't exactly mass them. They just destroy so many units, so many uh, buildings, just so easily. They've got seven pierce armor. They are so bad to go up against if you're an archer. I couldn't imagine it. Finally, though, we do see a Venom stuck going into a bit of pike play, which is kind of really... It's been needed for the last few minutes, actually, considering his opponent's just been creating nothing but Tarkins. 
Are we seeing that last attack upgrade? Yes, Blast Furnace on the way. And here we go. So just dealt with those Eagle Warriors here. And naturally just moving on to the buildings. And as soon as he does this, we're actually going to watch this. Because I like seeing how quick they kill things off. And I'm really starting to drive a point forward here on how good the unit is. Considering it doesn't take forever to upgrade like Paladins and things like that. Uh, Paladin definitely beats it. But still, it's kind of a more... I don't know. It's kind of hard to explain the way I'm looking at it. If you... It's a unit you can get out that's really strong, and you can get out pretty quickly once you're into the Imperial Age, but the thing is, you have to have castles up. That's the only thing that's really holding it back, in my opinion. More Tarkins are moving out across the map right now, and like we can see, they're extremely hard to deal with. Pikes can't catch them, and the archers that's going to be able to like sit around and snipe them from a distance going to be doing pretty much one damage, and it's not like you can exactly start walling off with buildings to try and hide. Because these things just absolutely smash their way through buildings, like we're about to see. So Doubt pushing out right now, doing quite a bit of damage. Getting some harass over here, of course, from those light cavalry that he's producing from the stables. Currently max pop at 34 minutes, so that's definitely a good play from him. Over on this side, we see the Tarkins looking for an entrance, and I think there might be a small gap here between these trees, so he's going to have to be careful about that. Tarkins are running in through this side, though, so we could see some trouble here as well. Stable's going even forward here, which is really dangerous, actually, with those villagers, so definitely willing to start doing some damage. And this is where it starts getting interesting. Definitely a strong raiding unit, and if we watch this, this town centre... How quick it gets killed off, there's really not a lot you can do to stop it. And it's gone. That's it. Nice and quickly. Move on to the next one. How many Tarkins did he lose there? He lost one? He lost one Tarkin there. Not too bad, honestly, considering he just took out a town center. And he's about to take out a second as well. Definitely some good play from Doubt here. He's really using these units to their advantage. Not going into these straight up brawls here so much, as he's just going around killing all his opponents' town centers and just kind of destroying his economy as best he can. Over here, though, kind of engaging a little bit, but still, at this stage, his opponent's economy down on 193 population with nearly 2k of every resource. Against Venom, he's on 16 gold, he's got 600 food. If we actually check here, what's the button I'm looking for? He has 36 idle villages right now. And if we look, the amount these units have been killing off here has been absolutely great, honestly. They're being used to their ability, which is exactly, it's raiding. It's, they're doing exactly what they've been made to do. Currently 140 population, declining pretty rapidly, whereas Doubt's just going back up to 200. Uh, so it's definitely quite an amazing play here from Doubt, showing just how valuable Tarkins are on this game. Uh, they can just really destroy your opponent quite quickly if you just go for that raid instead of just trying to get into that full-on fight, which everyone seems to be doing with Paladins so much these days. But yeah, I thought it was a good opportunity to feature that Tarkin, the unit we see kind of underused. And there's a the GG from Venom. There we go. Well played by him. So I just thought it was an interesting one there by Doubt. I always like the Tarkin as a unit. The only problem is that you need the castle to get it out, which I believe is being changed. So, there we go. I hope you enjoyed that. Something a little bit different. Kind of quick, just because I wanted to just get to the Tarkin bit and just, just show the destruction they caused here. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next game.